Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Erica Chen. I use she and they pronouns. I am one of the co-founding members of the CCF movement, and um, I am a multiracial person um, with medium length purple hair, wearing purple glasses. Um, I have light brown skin, brown eyes, and I'm wearing a multicolored tie-dyed sweatshirt today. Um, I want to start with um, a, a land acknowledgement. I, I do want to first um, acknowledge that the <laughs> acknowledgements I'm about to um, say right now are, are coming from a place um, from where I am personally. And I am in the United States, I'm on Turtle Island. Um, I know that we might have folks joining us um, from outside of the United States, outside of North America. So not everything I say will be applicable to everyone, um, but I still think it's important to do these acknowledgements. And I invite you all um, to do some of your own acknowledgements in the chat box if you would like to acknowledge um, where you personally live, work, and play. Um, so personally today, I am on the land of the Coast Salish people, the Duwamish people, um, today known as Seattle, Washington in the United States. Um, Coast Salish people have resided here since time immemorial and continue to thrive um, with respect and humility. I acknowledge, we acknowledge um, the history of this land, the dispossession of this land from the Coast Salish people and, and indigenous people and most importantly, the strength and resilience of Native people and their culture through this history to the present. Um, this acknowledgement serves really only as a first step in honoring the land that we occupy and the first peoples of that land. And we recognize the work to build and repair relationships with Native communities will be long and evolving. Um, like I said, this acknowledgement is really a first step. Um, other steps you can take if you'd like to um, include following and supporting indigenous led movements um, like Land Back, uh, Missing and Murdered Indigenous People, signing petitions, um, supporting movements like blocking pipelines um, when indigenous folk ask for help and action, taking those actions. Um, you can also uh, volunteer, donate. Personally, I donate monthly to Rail Rent Duwamish here in Seattle, but you can definitely take time and put effort and uh, connect with your local tribes, your local communities and support them in ways that they ask. Um, so I would also like to do, I don't know um, if you all are familiar, I'd also like to do a labor acknowledgement. I'm going to paste in the chat a little bit more about what a labor acknowledgement is um, and a source there for you if you're interested. Um, but we also pause to recognize and acknowledge the labor upon which our country here in the United States, um, our country, our state, and institutions are built. We remember that our country is built on the labor of enslaved people who were kidnapped and brought to the U.S. from the African continent and recognize the continued contribution of their survivors. We also acknowledge all immigrant labor, including voluntary, involuntary, trafficked, forced, and undocumented peoples who contributed to the building of this country and continue to serve within our labor force. We acknowledge all unpaid caregiving labor. Finally, we acknowledge that our institutions rely on hourly student contingent and unpaid labor, and we recognize those contributions. So with that, I will uh, pass our microphone back to uh, James. Thanks, Erica. So again, today is a celebration to reflect upon the last year of community-centric fundraising and what it has meant for our movement. It'll be interactive. We're gonna use the Zoom polling feature to get input from all of you in the audience. We'll do a couple of breakout rooms to build community and conversation and discussion. And we'll also feature some of the folks who have been supporting this movement, both new and old. So to get us started, um, I'm going to ask my friend Rocky to put up the first poll on the screen so that everyone can participate. And our question is, you know, how have you engaged with the CCF movement this past year? Have you been on our Slack channel? Have you read or even contributed to 
content on our hub, the website? Have you joined an event in the past? Maybe one of the previous BIPOC town halls? Or have you been organizing in your local community? Again, a lot of options, select everything that applies to you. And we'll just give a quick moment for everyone to review all of the options and take a poll. All right, so Rocky, can you close the poll now and we could display the results to everyone? So it looks like for most people, they have shared CCF principles with their coworkers and colleagues. And I think that has been so amazing for me personally, when someone reaches out to me within my own organization to talk about these principles. I see a lot of folks have used the content from the hub and we have had some amazing contributors and I definitely wanna thank them for their help. So I'm gonna pass it on now to two of our leads in the CCF movement, Andrea and Michelle, and I invite them to introduce themselves and to help guide us in our first section now and thinking about our successes and our wins in the past year. So Andrea, Michelle. Yo, hey everybody, so happy to be here. So incredible to celebrate one year of the Content Hub being up. My name is Michelle Shireen Muri. I am a co-chair of community-centric fundraising and the host of the Ethical Rainmaker podcast. I am so, so tickled that so many people here said that that's one way that they've been engaging. That's great. Um, thank you. Uh, we're asked to describe ourselves physically, and um, I'm a multi-ethnic Iranian-American. I look ethnically ambiguous, um, and Andrea described me as dulce de leche skin the other day with long, curly, dark hair. Um, and uh, today I'm wearing a light blue dress with red roses. Um, CCF has a longer history than when we released the Content Hub, and so I want to introduce you to Andrea Arenas, a longtime member and friend who was actually our first co-chair. Um, and, and honestly, for me, she was my personal inspiration to join CCF, and now she's co-chair again. Um, so welcome back, Andrea. Thanks, Michelle. Hi, everyone. I'm Andrea Arenas. It's great to share this space with you today. I'm biracial, half black and half white. I have dark brown curly hair. I'm wearing a black top with blue, orange, and white pattern. So um, we're, we're going to go over some of the highlights of, of what our programming pod has determined are the biggest successes of CCF over the last year. And there is so much to love about what's been created um, by all of us that are here today and all of us that are part of this movement. It's really exciting. And Andrea is going to start. Yeah, for sure. So this time last year, CCF was only located in Seattle. We've been so excited to hear how the principles have resonated with you and amazed by the number of regional chapters that are formed. We imagine CCF as a movement, knowing it would look and take shape in different ways dependent on regional community needs. So we have a trivia question for you. How many self-organized regional groups are talking on the CCF Slack? What do you think? We could end it so people could see it results quickly. Um, Y'all are underestimating yourselves. It's 87. There's 87 regional groups around the world have formed community and convened on Slack. Uh, thank you all for coming together. And on top of that, over 3,900 people have joined the CCF Slack community. Shout out to uh, Rocky Agrawal, who's been one of the administrators. There are also a lot of informal administrators, like just making sure that Slack is running running well and that things are being addressed. Thank you. Um, and you know, in terms of organizing around the CCF Slack channel, uh, you'll be meeting uh, one of the members a little bit later here. But in fact, in Texas, a group of people who didn't previously know each other before they joined their Slack channel on the CCF Slack for Texas met. They've started meeting, they started supporting each other, they've been organizing monthly meetings. Over 100 people in Texas have been coming in and out of those virtual meetings. This Texas group now holds two monthly meetings, 
One is a CCF meeting to support each other and build together. And the other is one where they use Troika Consulting, one of the liberating structures of facilitation, to brainstorm and troubleshoot with each other ways of being community-centered and bringing community-centered practices to their work and supporting each other in general. It's really, really powerful. Um, they also band together to organize. For example, earlier this year, one of the AFP chapters um, local uh, at a locality in Texas decided that they would put on an all experts panel of only white folks. And this CCF group um, spoke up to talk about what true diversity looks like and where expertise, uh, where, where else expertise can come from. So shout out to CCF Texas, but we know that things like that are happening all over the place and not just in the US, all over the world. And it's really exciting. Um, you'll meet Marcus Cunningham in just a few minutes, who's one of those members of the, the Texas group. So shout out Texas CCF. Yay, Texas. Uh, the, CC, the CCF Content Hub has had a global reach. The Content Hub has been accessed most by people in the US, Canada, the UK, New Zealand, Germany, Australia, China, Mexico, the Philippines, and India. In fact, Someone from just about every country in the world has checked out the hub. That is amazing. If you aren't familiar with the content hub, people from all over our sector have worked with our editor, Stacy Wynn, to birth new content pieces about their experiences and visions for a community-centric future. We've chosen to center the voices of BIPOC contributors and raised money to pay all content contributors $200 to $250 per piece. In a sector that requests free labor so frequently, paying our contributors has been a value of ours from the beginning. We've heard from many of you that the Content Hub has been a resource on ways to implement CCF principles, and most importantly, a forum that illustrates that there is community out there ready to challenge traditional fundraising practices with a vision of a more equitable and just sector. Our site has had more than 1,750,000 ,000 unique users. So another little trivia question. Do you know how many original pieces have been shared on the Content Hub? Cool, let's call that. It's 114, so we'll reach 237 soon, but currently 114 original pieces uh, let's take a moment to celebrate our Content Hub contributors. If you are a contributor and you're here, can you post or wave, um, post in the chat or wave if we can't see you right now. Thank you so much for all of your wisdom and expertise and thank you for, for being vulnerable and sharing with us. So when the founding council decided to build a Content Hub, it was from the surveyed knowledge that across the sector, most people are ready to work towards change, but wanted examples, stories, analysis, information, and a top priority, connection. The request for connection resulted in the Slack community. And by prioritizing requests from fundraisers of color, we started holding BIPOC town halls, a series of three events this year, whose purpose was to connect people of color with each other, to share experiences and solidarity. One person, Nikki, wrote to us, CCF has helped me put a name to the thoughts and feelings I have around traditional fundraising. From the beginning, the founding group knew that it would create the Content Hub and Slack community and quickly work to distribute decision-making, including programming choices, to a global council of regionally diverse peers. You'll hear an update on this later. But we also heard a request for connection now. So we've held three events with 250 to 300 people attending each event. If you attended a BIPOC town hall, please let us know how it felt for you in the chat. We'd love to hear those experiences and we're gonna make space later to hear more about them. So that again was an invitation. Like, how do you feel being a part of the uh, part of the BIPOC town hall? We just heard we heard so much good feedback when we were in them, and having people feel really connected. And uh, many times we heard folks say like it was the first safe space they'd been in. We've heard we've received emails that said I quit my job because of CCF. Thank you. And other emails that would say I stayed in my job because of CCF. Thank you. So it's been really exciting. Would love to hear from from folks here. 
Um, you know, the Ethical Rainmaker podcast has been one of the most consistent pieces on the CCF Content Hub, and it was chosen by others in our programming pod, not me, um, as a highlight, which is exciting. And for those who haven't heard it, um, the Ethical Rainmaker is a podcast that kind of brings definition and color to some of the topics that seem fuzzy, um, or even topics that some folks don't know about. Um, and live as non-existent to us. So the topics range from what the kink community can bring to the nonprofit community around consent principles um, to what it looks like to truly heal. Um, we uh, we have a principle, uh, an episode on principles of reparation with Dr. David Ragland. So two seasons have come out already. Season three is coming in September, which I'm excited about. And we'll um, also feature case studies of how CCF is being applied um, kind of, a, you know, in, in a variety of different situations. We've heard from people around the world about the podcast too, which is really exciting, and about the impact of some of our episodes. In fact, I was most surprised personally to hear that some of the episodes are being used as curriculum, not, um, not only in universities, but in grad schools and in doctoral programs. And the biggest surprise to me was in law school. So that's amazing, definitely unintended impact. Um, and we have a survey for you, the top four, the top three, um, popular episodes were White Women as Gatekeepers, The Racist Roots of Nonprofits and Philanthropy, um, Part 1, and Decolonizing Data. So the question is, which do you think was the most popular? And we'll just give a second um, for you to guess. It's close. Like it. It's really <laughs> close. It's really close. So I think we can call it. This is great. Um, of, of those episodes, it's actually White Women as Gatekeepers featuring Fleur Larson was the most popular episode by double every other episode, which is wild. Um, and I have to say that um, we knew that it would, we, we would, it would strike, but we, we weren't completely sure. And I've been receiving emails and like LinkedIn's and, you know, sometimes text messages about that episode, um, even a year later. And I'm hearing from white folks about, you know, thank you so much. I didn't realize I was, you know, doing these behaviors or this clarified so much for me about what's been happening, you know, and how I've been complicit. We've also been hearing from people of color, especially women of color saying, thank you. This has been happening to me in my workplace. I didn't have a name for it. So um, congrats to Fleur Larson and the episode White Women as Gatekeepers, which has had, again, more than double all the other episodes. But um, my team, Isaac kaplan Wolner, um, Kazmara Hall, and Rochelle Pierce are really excited to bring you a whole third season and a fourth season um, early next year of The Ethical Rainmaker. So you'll hear more soon. I'm excited for that third season. I know, me too. <laughs> So we, we've heard from people around the world that the 10 CCF principles have brought guidance, encouragement, and validation. When we formed CCF, we made the decision not to be an organization or certification. CCF will look different for individuals, nonprofits, and regions. We are a movement. As we've all likely experienced with equity and anti-racist training, we cannot solve these issues with a set number of workshops. The work doesn't have a deadline. CCF and its principles will be evolving. So thank you for your commitment to CCF. Thank you for sharing CCF's content with coworkers and colleagues. Thank you for taking this journey with us. And most importantly, thank you for being in community with us. And later we'll be asking you, um, you know, th these were the achievements that our programming pod decided were like the best ones, the highlights, but later we'll be asking you what bubbles up for you. And um, yeah, so here we go. Thank you so much for being here today. Thanks. Hi, thank you for those updates, Andrea and Michelle. And I think back to the first poll that we took, you know, and it's very clear that this community has engaged with CCF in so many ways, both learning and contributing to the content and the movement. So we want to create some space to really reflect from this community. What are those highlights for each of you? What's gonna happen next is we'll do a short breakout about 15 minutes long for you to get to know one another and highlight what has been the major achievements or moments of pride over the past year for each of you, both in your personal work or in your community. So I'm gonna once again ask Rocky to help queue up the breakout rooms and we will 
um, see everyone back here in about 15 minutes. For anyone who might be joining us late, we spent the first 15 minutes recapping some of the major wins and highlights and things that we've been proud of over the past year. Oh, I think. <laughs> and folks are now returning from the breakout rooms where they shared their personal or um, community successes. So welcome back, everyone. And now I'd like to pass the mic on to my friends, Marcus, Marissa, and Rachel, who will give us a quick update on what's been happening with the transition um, as we move toward a more global and diversified council. So Marissa, Marcus, and Rachel, it is all yours. Thank you, James. It's great to see you again. My name is Rachel D'Souza Siebert. I use she, her pronouns, and I am coming to you from Mississippian and Alini land, um, also occupied by St. Louis, Missouri. Um, today, I am wearing a black t-shirt that reads phenomenally brown owned, which refers to my uh, work, Gladiator Consulting. Um, I'm also sporting uh, the middle part, which the Gen Zs on the call should be thrilled about, um, and have a smoky purple ombre situation happening with my hair. Um, I identify as South Asian American as well. Um, you've heard everyone speak a lot about um, what it means to be a part of a movement. For me, um, my connection to CCF began back in 2017 uh, when Vu first wrote the nine principles of community-centric fundraising uh, shared on his blog. So it was wonderfully thrilling for me to see this movement launch last summer out of Seattle with a small group of folks. Um, but we know when we think about movements um, that we need to think about how we define success that movements are seeking sweeping change, that they begin with values. And we have those things, but we also have an opportunity to grow. And one of the things that we know is true about when we think of the difference between movements and organizations is that the leadership of a movement is distributed and agile. It is not hierarchical. So I am excited, um, in addition to my role um, as a speaker on the CCF Speakers Bureau and occasionally writing for the CCF Content Hub, like crushing my imposter syndrome every time I publish something there, um, as well as being able to be a catalyst for the CCF work in the St. Louis, Missouri community um, to join in a volunteer capacity on the CCF Transition Pod, um, because we have an opportunity to think about what our roles in the movement call us to do. And that means that we are all leaders and we all have an opportunity to advance this work. So I would like to kick it to my colleague, Marissa, to tell you a little bit more about what the Transition Pod has been grappling with over the last few months. Thank you so much, Rachel. And I just have to start with the admiration for the purple ombre hair. <clears throat> My name is Marissa DeSalles. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm coming to you from Nisanon land with smoky skies uh, in a place that is currently called Sacramento, California. I came to this work, oh, my, my appearance. So I am a um, uh, roughly middle-aged, light-skinned African-American woman with short curly hair and gigantic gold hoop uh, earrings that are probably a little distracting, but allow me to um, uh, indulge in ADHD stimming without uh, bothering everybody else. So uh, you can't see, but off camera, I'm also wearing lots and lots of crystals on my wrist <laughs> and around my neck, which also serve to uh, keep me busy. And you may, uh, if you are sighted, notice that I move uh, and I apologize if that's distracting. So. I uh, came to this work as a burned out fundraiser um, in a very conservative organization. And um, I had just recently been laid off from that organization when the um, launch of the, the hub was announced. And I had written um, a very angry <laughs> piece of work that I had no intention of publishing. And as soon as I saw the email from Vu, I decided I had to publish it and I had to publish it on the hub, uh, which was a terrifying thing to do and obviously the best decision of my entire professional career. So um, that's my perspective. 
my current um, joy and challenge is to serve along with these other two talented folks and some of the other folks that are on your screen as part of the uh, transition pod. And what excites me most about designing the future of the leadership of this movement is that we are being exceedingly intentional and careful in our processes so that we are not you know, uh, perpetuating past harms and just upholding the same systems that we are critiquing. So that is um, extremely exciting to me as is, to be perfectly honest, any opportunity to just be in a virtual room with these brains because this group of people is what gives me life. So I am so, so excited to be here and so excited to be a part of the future of community-centric fundraising. And on to Marcus. Yeah, thank you, Marissa. I am, so we have to be here. Um, I am Marcus Cunningham. I am a, uh, I use he, him pronouns. I am a black male wearing uh, black glasses and a blue polka dot shirt um, coming to you from the unceded lands of the Wichita, the Tawakini, the Humanos, and the Kickapoo, also known as Dallas, Texas. Um, I came to CCF after being laid off from my job last year uh, during the pandemic as the organization closed and uh, was uh, roaming, the, roaming the deserts of West Texas as the, as the launch event launched. So that was kind of right out of my alley in terms of really deciding whether to continue being a fundraiser. And since then, I have gone on to um, not only join this wonderful transition pod, but I'm also an organizer in Texas, as was referenced earlier. And so it, our Texas organizers, shout out y'all, um, have been going since last fall, organizing and kicking over tables and having community meetings and doing all the things that are really necessary to, to move this movement forward. So uh, we will continue doing that. Come to the Texas channel if you're interested in doing more of that with us. In terms of the, the global pod, uh, what you can expect from us going forward is we're going to continue to have some really deep conversations, you know, laying this foundation um, and, and getting out of the way, because what we want to do, as Marissa said, is, is set the tone and set the, you know, parameters for, for what a good global council should look like, and then cede that to, to the people who are doing the work. And so you'll have you'll see some some things you know from us from time to time. We'll get we'll continue to get your input. We'll continue to watch the Slack space and other spaces. I, I am particularly interested in looking towards uh, the other groups who are organizing and how they're organizing and, and taking those lessons in and, and pulling them up into our our um, into our structure for the global council. Uh, but all in all, we are aiming. Uh, for a July 2022 installation of the Global Council. Uh, that is, you know, that is, that's squishy. So we'll, we'll give you updates along the way if we, if that changes or not. Uh, so keep watching this space. Um, keep watching this space. Keep having conversations. Uh, we're, we're seeing everything. We're hearing everything. And, and we appreciate everything that, that y'all are doing to contribute to this movement. Thank you for that update. Marcus and Rachel and Marissa, you know, I was you know, taking a few notes of just what I heard as you shared, and there's such a different or, or vast range of emotions from joy and excitement. And, and I also heard anger. And I, I think we can be real about that because, you know, anger and joy and happiness, they can all exist together. I think this past year has been very challenging for many people and anger is oftentimes what kind of gives us the fire and the energy to get into action. But it's also important to remember that you know, what keeps us in this work is the joy from the friendships and the relationships and the community that we build over the year. So I, I was just reflecting on that as the three of you were sharing, so thank you. We're gonna break out into another room now and to really engage this community again in thinking about what the future will look like. What will this next year look like? Um, so we're asking everyone in your next breakout, um, please share what you are looking forward to. What do you want to see more of both from CCF and from this community? My colleague Erica posted a, the prompt in the chat and there's also a link where you can note take if you are more comfortable 
you know, putting your thoughts down in writing rather than verbalizing it. So again, what are you looking forward to? What is on your mind for the year ahead? And with that, I'll ask Rocky again to help break us out for another 15 minutes of conversation. Welcome back, everyone. Hope you had a good conversation. So we are nearing the end of our program now, and I just want to you know, reflect on what we did this last hour. We had a look at some of our wins and successes over the past year, um, had an update from Marcus, Marissa, and Rachel on the things that are happening right now as we transition to a global movement. And then we just came back from many conversations about our vision for the future of this movement and the type of community that we're trying to build. So as we begin to wrap things up, I want to invite all of the speakers again to come back on camera, come off mic um, and share any surprises and takeaways and reactions. And I'd also like to invite any fundraisers of color, any people of color who have been involved in this movement to help um, again, wrap it up and share your reactions too. If you have anything you'd like to share to the room or the audience, just uh, use Zoom to raise your hand and you can come off mute. See a hand from Melinda. Fine, if no one else is gonna jump in here and say, hi, Erica, great article. But also, I'm so grateful for all of you. So thankful that you guys are showing us the way to incorporate this into our everyday lives and our work around where we are. Um, this is awesome. So I'm looking forward to helping support this for as long as we can keep it going. Well, thank you, Melinda. And it's great to have you with us today. Other thoughts, reactions, takeaways, shout outs that people want to share to this community? I see a hand from Vu. Hey everyone, this is Vu, I use he, him. And our group had a really great conversation about these multiple intersection things that we also have to address at the same time, like boards, you know, they become such a major barrier to implementing CCF work. And we just wanna burn some boards down. I might be taking some liberties and summarizing what we discuss a bit. Uh, but we need to talk about that. Also, hiring practices that Erica and others have been talking about. And also, because we are building such an amazing movement uh, and a platform of leaders, like we want to start like like really using the weight of this to advance some legislation and to advocate for certain stuff that are just ridiculous. I think having thousands of us advocating for more equitable practices, I think we'll be louder. And now that we're building capacity, it's going to be exciting. We're going to flip some tables and burn stuff down. It's going to be awesome. Thank you. I think the only time I've seen a table get flipped is like during a football game or something. So we want to bring that to the nonprofit world. Let's do it. Uh, I think Joel, Joel is next. Hey, everybody. I have seen a table flipped in the nonprofit world, and it was by someone I was I was helping with a meal. <laughs> an exciting day for sure. But I just wanted to, to um, tell everyone in Massachusetts that Vu's work is being kind of promoted in all of like the newsletters that I've been seeing. And I'm super excited that he's going to be our keynote speaker at the Providers Council Conference this coming fall. So Vu, we're super excited to see you. Um, and I just, I, I'm just so glad in Massachusetts that, that this is that this is bubbling to the surface the way it needs to be bubbling to the surface. So that's all I had to say. And Vu, we'll see you uh, in October. Rachel. I think one of the things that's been so wonderful and inspiring to me is seeing the amount of people here today on this call who have been like 
struggling and slogging through trying to figure out what making change looks like and knowing that there is a community here who I bet we're all really good at flipping tables. If I'm going to be honest with it, we just need our opportunity, right. To shine at the table flipping. Um, and it just gives me hope that with this many smart and wise and generous humans, um, in this work that, we will be able to be the change that we seek in the sector. So that's just um, maybe super corny, but it really is how I feel about um, the power that I'm like feeling from seeing all the faces on the screen today. Thank you, Rachel. I think we have time for one, maybe two more, if anybody wants to and share any reflections or thoughts before we wrap it up. Marissa. Yeah, I just wanted to close by um, inviting everybody here. If you have not already joined the Slack community, if you have not subscribed to Michelle's incredible podcast, um, if you have not written something for the hub, right? Do it. Join in, stop lurking, get involved, join your local community, spread the word to somebody. Use whatever platform you have to advance the principles and engage people in the difficult conversations, okay? Um, it's working, what we're doing. It's super exciting, and it's only going to grow from here. And it is, um, it is just an incredibly exciting moment, I think, in philanthropy, in the world of nonprofits, in the world of trying to do good better. Thanks, Marissa. And Mark, you have your hand up next. Yeah, I do. Um, uh, I'm in Chicago. I'm a Caucasian male who's 67, probably retiring later this year or next year. I said this in a breakout group, and I just want to say it to everybody. Don't forget how important it is to be active in politics, to get the right people elected to public office, to argue within the Democratic Party. Thank you. Uh, over moderation and liberal issues and all the rest of it. Not-for-profit folks tend to kind of tiptoe around that, don't want, don't want to offend anybody, but you can do all that in your personal time without wearing a badge at work. And I just hope everyone, please, please, please keep that in mind. We need a huge blue wave next year in November to wash the detrius out of this country as much as we can. So that's it. Okay, well, thank you, Mark. And thank you again, everyone, for joining us today and celebrating with us. Again, it has been a long year. And it's funny because I think it was November or December last year. I was so excited for 2021. And now I can't wait for 2022. So <laughs> I think we have a lot of work ahead of us. But again, it's important to take time to slow down and celebrate and be with one another in community. So I'm really grateful for everyone making time for us today and joining us in this community and being um, here for one another. Um, we'll be available over email on Slack if you'd like to continue the conversation. And if you need help getting connected to one of the, the local chapters or affinity groups that we mentioned, um, you can reach out to our Slack moderator, Rocky, um, who is willing and very helpful, bleh, who is very capable of helping you connect with the appropriate group. So thanks again, everyone. I hope you have a great day.